Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of World Football Alliance Crunch Time. I'm your host, D.B. Love, here on World Sports and Entertainment Network. Thanks for tuning in. This week's show, we're in week 11 of the World Football Alliance. Let's jump right into the Alliance division. We'll start off with teams on a bye this week. We had Portland, Houston, uh, San Diego, Aftershock, and Mexico City all had buys this week. Um, now let's talk about the Week 10 Players of the Week. The Offensive Player of the Week in Week 10 for the Alliance Division was quarterback for the Columbus Aviators, Trey Pyle. Trey went 21 of 30 for 457 yards and 5 touchdowns. So congratulations to him. Defensive Player of the Week in the Alliance Division, Parker Miles, middle linebacker for the Chicago Tigers. Parker had 16 tackles, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Excuse me. Congratulations to both those guys. Now let's get to some scores from the Alliance Division. We had Oklahoma City take on Austin. Austin won that game 29 to 10. Austin improves to 2 and 5 and Oklahoma City falls to 3 and 5 in that one. Up next, we had those Chicago Tigers take on the Orlando Wizards. Orlando Wizards won that game 28-24 in a good game there. Uh, Wizards improved to four and four. Chicago Tigers fall to one and seven, uh, bottom of the Alliance Division. Next up, we had those Columbus Aviators taking on Salt Lake City. Columbus won that one, thirty-one to twenty-four. Columbus improves to six and one, and Salt Lake City falls to four and four. Um, next up, we had. London Black Knights taking on the San Antonio. San Antonio won that one 30 to 10. San Antonio improves to 4 and 3. London falls to 2 and 7. And our final score, uh, we had Memphis Hounds taking on Sacramento. The Hounds won handily 28 to 7. They improved to 6 and 2. Sacramento falls to 3 and 5. Um, an injury note in that first game I told you about Oklahoma City Nighthawks taking on Austin. The Nighthawks lost their all-star tight end Wade Rempf. He is out indefinitely with an injury. We'll try to get more on that for you, but a big loss for Oklahoma City. But let's get to the highlight of this week from the Alliance Division where the Toronto Thunderbirds took on the division-leading Brooklyn Barons. Check it out. All right, we start things off here in Toronto. Brooklyn Barons taking on Toronto Thunderbirds. And on the opening drive of the game, the division-leading Brooklyn Barons march right down the field. Russell Gallion leads them down. Pierce Steed runs it in for the touchdown for an early 7-0 lead for the Barons. Oh my goodness, what a play. Toronto put a touchdown on the board. Starting quarterback Russell Fetterkill has been knocked out of this game with an injury. Backup quarterback Fury is in. And he hits Zemantis right there for a long touchdown to tie the game here in the second quarter after both teams added a few field goals. It was 10-3. Backup quarterback Fury hit Zemantis to tie the game at 10. Touchdown Toronto. Fury hits the receiver for a touchdown as the second quarter is coming to an end to give the Thunderbirds a 17-10 lead. There was a pass 
interference call on Brooklyn. Of course, Toronto declined it for the touchdown and a 17-10 lead. And two plays later, Russell Gallion doing Russell Gallion things. Brooklyn answers right back with a long touchdown of their own. Gallion hitting bags there who goes untouched in the end zone to tie the game at 17. And here we are, one second remaining in the first half after forcing a fumble and recovering that fumble. Brooklyn forced the Toronto to fumble and recovered it for the turnover. They then drive down the field and kick that field goal right there as halftime expires to take a 20 to 17 lead into halftime. There's Federkeel and Fury both walking off. Federkeel went out with an injury. Fury's played this majority of the first half. Here are our halftime stats. Toronto leading all offensive categories, but it's Brooklyn who are out front in the scoreboard 20 to 17. Here Pierce Steed walks it in for the first touchdown to open the game for Brooklyn. Fury would come in after the injury and hit some minus there for Toronto's first touchdown to make it a 10 to 10 ball game. Bags would then strike right here to tie things up at 17 after Toronto added an additional touchdown. There was the fumble that led to the field goal. To the third quarter we go. Oh no, opening drive of the second half for Toronto. Gaten fumbles the football recovered by Brooklyn. Both teams have now forced and recovered a fumble. Here we go in the fourth quarter. Toronto down to the three yard line. Looking to get in the end zone. You see the number on takeaways there. Brooklyn has two today. Ranked fifth in the league this season in takeaway. Second and goal from Toronto from the three. Federkeel back in at quarterback. And he completes the touchdown pass there to close the lead a little. Toronto now trail 23 to 26. Are you kidding me? What an interception by all-star cornerback Jamichael Claybrooks of Brooklyn right there. Right on the sideline, picks off Federkeel, gets his feet down to complete the interception. After adding a field goal on their last drive, Brooklyn lead this one 29-24 with 5.54 to play. And Pierce Steed almost puts this one away. Takes the handoff from about 20 yards out. Gets down to the one yard line. Brooklyn Barons looking to extend their lead here with about 310 remaining in the game. First and goal from the one Galleon. Hands to Steed again. He gets bottled up. Steed has had a phenomenal day. 32 carries, 129 yards, and a touchdown. Galleon has also had a phenomenal day in the pass game as they burn the clock all the way down to one second, and they do not get the playoff. What a mistake there by veteran quarterback Russell Gallion. Second and goal on the one yard line. Gets hit with a delay of game call. That'll back him up to the nine yard line to make it second and goal from the nine. Gallion hits Bloomberg, gets forced out of bounds inside the five at the two yard line. 
See the numbers there for Galleon today. 32 pass completions, over 300 yards. Double tight, guys, double tight. Third and goal now from the two. Barons lead by five in this important game in the Alliance division. Steed takes the handoff and he will get bottled up. Toronto trailing by five. Get a stop inside the five as we go to the two minute warning. Are you kidding me? After Brooklyn added a field goal to go up by eight, pursuant kickoff inside the two minute warning, almost ran all the way back by Gaten for Toronto. Takes the kickoff all the way down to the 16. So trailing by eight with a minute 47 to play, Thunderbirds have the ball at the 16. Adams takes the handoff, gets stopped for no gain. Thunderbirds run a hurry up offense, starting quarterback. Federkeel is back in the game. He takes the snap, fires right, almost complete there. Not sure if that was dropped or knocked away from Cudho, but it'll bring up third and a very important nine yards here. Federkeel takes the snap, running back screen to Adams. Great defending there by the Brooklyn Barons to fight through the block and make the tackle. Now fourth and seven, Thunderbirds will go for it. They've got to have a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And he's picked off. Federkill picked off in the end zone. Wilkerson downs it. And that will put the game away most likely for the division leading Brooklyn Barons. And that does it for us here from Toronto, Canada. The Brooklyn Barons win over the Toronto Thunderbirds to remain in command of the Alliance Division here in week 11 of the World Football Alliance. Entertaining hard fought game by both sides as I said Brooklyn will remain first in the division. Toronto I believe sits in fourth now in the division after this game. Flip flop from the first half. Brooklyn took advantage in the second half gaining the advantage in yards and turnovers. So there you have it for the highlights. Brooklyn Barons win that one improved to seven and one. Toronto Thunderbirds fall to four and three. Now let's get to some standings uh, from the Alliance Division. With that win, Brooklyn Barons remain atop the division seven and one. In second place, Columbus Aviators are six and one. Third place, Memphis Hounds, six and two. And Portland rounds out the top four at six and three. Um, from there on, it's a, a big jumble there um, in the middle of the division. Um, between a lot of teams, like the Wizards are four and four, uh, Salt Lake City, four and four. There's a lot of four loss teams in there. Uh, Houston's three and four, so um, that bottom half of the playoff spot still up for a tight battle. Let's slide over to the United Division now. On buys this week in the United Division, Columbus Caps, Mexico City, San Diego Crusaders, Toronto Huskies all had a bye. The Week 10 Players of the Week in the Alliance, sorry, in the United Division, uh, Cooper Chamora, quarterback for the Austin Armadillos, was the Offensive Player of the Week last week. He went 24 of 35, 324 yards, three passing touchdowns, as well as one rushing touchdown. Defensive Player of the Week, United Division, Deontay Chapman, middle linebacker for Columbus Caps. He had 11 tackles, a sack, and an interception. Boom. Scores from the United Division. 
this week. We had Austin Armadillos take on the Memphis Steamers. Armadillos won that one 31 to 20. They improved to 6 and 1. Steamers fall to 2 and 6. Next up, uh, Brooklyn Beats took on Sacramento. Um, Brooklyn won that one 35-21. Beats improved to 5 and 4. Sacramento fall to 3 and 5. Up next, Houston took on Oklahoma City Bisons. Uh, Houston won that one 27-17. They improved to 4 and 5. Bisons fall to 4 and 3. Uh, next up, San Antonio took on the Chicago Blues. San Antonio won that one 23-20. Um, they improved to 5-3. and three. Blues fall to 3-4. and four. And the last score, uh, Portland took on Salt Lake City. Uh, Portland narrowly won that one 20-17. They improved to 5-1. and one. Salt Lake City falls to 4-4. Four and four. Now, let's get you out to the highlight of the week in the United Division. London Monarchs taking on Dublin Celtic Tigers. It's an international battle. Check it out. First touchdown of the game. London Monarchs strike. Carter Foles hits the receiver. Cochran for a touchdown. Slow start to this one for both teams. Monarchs finally get it going, get on the board to lead 7-0. Another touchdown for London Monarchs. Carter Foles hits Cummings for the second touchdown and a 14-0 lead. This comes after an interception of Dublin backup quarterback Graham Willey who started this game for an injured Roy Dale. If you remember, he got injured at the end of last week's game. He did not start this game. The backup Graham Willie did. He has had a tough go of it to start this game. He was picked off leading to that London touchdown. Another injury note, backup running back Jakari Mayo also started this game for the injured Martinez Drake who was also injured last week. Touchdown Dublin Celtic Tigers, they block a London Monarchs punt, scoop it up and run it back for a touchdown to get back in this one, look at that, punt block scooped up, walked in for the touchdown to make it 14-7. Another injury note, Carter Foles appeared to be injured on the last offensive possession for the Monarchs. London picks off Graham Willey for a second time. This one returned for a pick six to extend the lead 21 to 7. Graham Willey has started 0 of 8 with two interceptions to start this game. What a wild game. London strike again, this time off a blocked field goal. The field goal is blocked right there by number 28, scooped up and ran all the way back by number 38 for a touchdown to extend the second quarter lead to 28-7 for the Monarchs. And two plays after the block punt, the Monarchs get another touchdown. This one comes off the arm of backup quarterback Cooper, who has come in for the injured Carter Foles. That is his first career passing touchdown as he hits the receiver and gives London a 35-7 lead, 9-10 still to play in the first half. This game is insane. Pick six for Dublin Celtic Tigers. Backup quarterback for London Cooper throws a pick six. After Dublin just added a field goal before that interception. They now have trimmed the first half lead to 35 to 17. Yes, we are still in the first half.
And we are not done here in the first quarter. London Monarchs drive down the field and with two seconds remaining in the first quarter, Cooper hits Schwabshire for another touchdown. And that finally does it for our first half. Take a look at the halftime stats here. 42 to 17 first half score. Nothing after that extremely wild first half. Not a single thing highlight worthy happened in the third quarter. We jump now to the fourth quarter. Very first play of the fourth quarter. Another interception for London Monarchs. Number 38 gets his second interception of the game. We are starting the fourth quarter. London leads 42 to 17. Another pick six for the London Monarchs. This game is a complete blowout. CJ Virgil with the pick six there. And in the final minute of the game, Dublin add a touchdown. And that does it for us here. Here's some highlights from the game that was dominated by the London Monarchs. A couple pick sixes. There's one. Uh, there was a blocked punt return for a touchdown. A blocked field goal return for a touchdown. Just an insane game. Monarchs dominate 52 to 30. Six takeaways. And there you have it, London absolutely dominated a wild game. So much wild stuff happened. What an entertaining game. Um, London improves to 4-2. and two. Celtic Tigers fall to 4-3. and three. We have an injury update from that game. Starting quarterback for Dublin, outstanding quarterback Roy Dale, it will be out four weeks with an injury uh, that he suffered there. And even worse news, uh, starting running back for the Celtic Tigers, Martinez Drake, will be out 31 weeks. Uh, devastating injury for Martinez Drake. We wish him all the best and a speedy recovery. Um, he was having an outstanding year, so hate that news for him. Uh, hope those guys get better soon. So with those scores... Your standings in the United Division. Austin Armadillos lead the division at 6-1. and one. Um, Lumberjacks are second in the division at 5-1. and one. After that last win, the London Monarchs are in third in the division at 5-2. and two. San Antonio Dreadnoughts at, in fourth at 5-3. and three. Those Dublin Celtic Tigers in fifth at four and three, uh, also at four and three. Oklahoma City Bisons. Then the Brooklyn Beats are at five and four, and Salt Lake City Pioneers are at four and four. After their loss to the second place Portland Lumberjacks. So there you go. You're up to speed through eleven weeks in the World Football Alliance. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week for week 12. Later.